As a lot of you probably already know, Dragon Ball Fighters kind of shared some new information. But not really. What they had to share was mostly about the fact that the World Tour Finals will be happening next week. But they did drop a couple of hints that would basically confirm that there would be a Season 2 in Fighters. Those hints are basically that there will be some game changes in how the system will work in Dragon Ball Fighters. So this is huge because one, a game system can change can dramatically change the meta and it will probably fix a lot of problems, Gotenks and Piccolo, essentially depending on what those changes are going to be. It could also mean a total swap in tier list, especially if those changes are what I want them to be. Also, a new season means new characters. The life and blood of any fighting game is, besides good gameplay, new characters. New characters brings new excitement. So what is this video about? This video is going to be about what I want to see in Season 2 in Dragon Ball Fighters, whether it's systematical changes or new characters. So let's talk about Dragon Ball Fighters system as it is currently. Right now the biggest thing that people know about Dragon Ball Fighters is Super Dash. For those of you who don't know what Super Dash is, it's when your character flies full screen and homes onto the enemy. Super Dash was heavily criticized as it heavily simplified neutral of Dragon Ball Fighters. If you didn't know how to approach or break your enemy's defensive neutral, you would just use Super Dash and all would be well. Now, there are a lot of different ways to counter Super Dash of course. You have DP or Dragon Punch, you have Down Heavy or 2H, you have Assist, or you have a well timed Normal. But a lot of these required around above average reaction time or skill to pull off, especially if the enemy was pretty good at mixing up super dash habits and timings. That's why the first change in the system for me it has to revolve around super dash. I don't think super dash was too strong personally, but I do believe super dash was way too defined in how people play. So how do I propose super dash be changed? I have multiple ideas. The first one is to make it so that raw super dash requires meter to be used based on how far you go if you use it without getting a non-assisted hit. This would make it so that people would have to really think about how they want to use Super Dash besides just, will I get punished for this? They would have to think about whether or not the offense would be worth it based on how much bar they would have to use. I think a full screen Super Dash should be at least 75% of a bar. The second idea I had would be to increase the startup on any Super Dash that is used out of a combo. That means any raw Super Dash. This would make it so that Super Dash would be easy to punish and people would, hesitant, would be more hesitant on whether or not they would want to use Super Dash because of the fact that their Super Dash would be so telegraphed. To compensate for it, however, I feel like the speed of raw Super Dash should either be increased or you should be able to Super Dash again after a smash by using a bar. Uh, we are going to straight up increase the risk of raw super dashing, I feel like we should also increase the reward at the same time. Another idea is that you should be able to be knocked out of super dash from 3 or 4 key blasts. This would make zoners like Frieza a little bit more practical in the game. The most extreme case for super dash that I could think of was that it should be locked out unless you actually get a hit, but I don't think that's really necessary. Another thing I think has to change in Dragon Ball Fighters is blue health. Blue health is way too strong and causes matches to go on for way too long, in the highest skill level of Dragon Ball Fighters at least. Dragon Ball Fighters is very snowball yes, but even with the amount of potential health you have in the game, it can be a big mountain for that snowball to slide down. In my opinion, the amount of blue health should either be cut down by, I don't know, like 30% or go up at least 50% slower, especially if you're going to nerf offensive things like super dash it only makes sense to also nerf something like blue health i also think counter hit should mean something in the game i mean i mean, it i guess it's bad enough that if you're mashing in the corner or something and you get hit you're probably going to be get bodied and lose a character but i really really want to hurt people for mashing when they're not supposed to especially if they mash on wake up also, potentially, I think the clash mechanic is pretty cool, but I feel like I should get rewarded for winning a long clash by having, I don't know, a better scaling combo depending on the length of the clash. Only counting after the second hit so Vegito can't just automatically just get better scaling combos for clashing with you with 5-0 because he's always going to win that clash. Let me know about your thoughts on these mechanic changes in the comment section. They may suck because 
I'm not a professional or anything. I don't have any deep knowledge on Dragon Ball Fighter system. So there may be something that I'm not thinking of that could be better changes or there may be something that I'm not thinking of on why these changes wouldn't be that great. Also let me know the changes you would make. But next let's go into character additions. So the first character I want to see added in Dragon Ball Fighters would probably have to be Jiren who is the most easy addition to add on the list. He's arguably the most popular antagonist in all of Dragon Ball Super. He's probably the easiest to make a moveset for because he showed so many moves and had so much screen time in Dragon Ball Super. And Jiren is just cool. He was pretty much hinted at as being an addition at an additional character in season 2 by Bandai Namco on their Twitter. Now, the one thing that I ask is don't make Jaren like Broly, where just because he was super strong in Dragon Ball Super, you just make him big and slow for no reason. Please make Jaren play like it felt like watching him. Except don't make him obviously super broken, or do make him broken so I can just play him and dominate everybody. I don't care either way. Speaking of Broly, I would love to see Dragon Ball Super Broly and Dragon Ball Fighters, especially after seeing the movie recently. Now I know a lot of people probably won't like this because we already have 18 Gokus and Vegeta, but Broly's my favorite character in Dragon Ball. And Dragon Ball Super Broly was a super dope movie, he did a lot of cool stuff, he would have a cool moveset, and he doesn't necessarily, when I think of Broly, when I think of the Dragon Ball Z Broly and I think of the Dragon Ball Super Broly, I don't necessarily think of them in the same way. Funny enough though, I feel like Dragon Ball Super Broly would make more sense in how they used the Dragon Ball Z Broly and Dragon Ball Fighters. And I feel like the Dragon Ball Z Broly should have a totally different playstyle, but that that's totally that has nothing to do with anything. But one thing though, I don't want full powered Super Saiyan Broly. I want the power up right before he goes Super Saiyan in Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. I want that one. I want the Great Ape but not Great Ape power up for Broly. Now for some maybe not so obvious picks for me and the characters I want to see in Dragon Ball Fighters. One that comes to mind is definitely Kefla. For one, Dragon Ball Fighters already doesn't have that much female representation with only Android 18 and Android 21. So having Kefla in the game could add a new female who is pretty good in Dragon Ball Super. She already used a good amount of moves in Dragon Ball Super so it shouldn't be hard to make a move list for her and she was a pretty dope pretty strong character. In my opinion, one of the cooler more popular characters in a tournament of power. Another character I want to see in Dragon Ball Fighters would definitely be Topo. The other pride trooper. The main reason I want to see Topo though, spoilers ahead for those of you who only watch the dub, is got a destruction Topo. Besides that, I don't really care about Topo. He wasn't really that great of a character. He didn't do that many moves, but seeing him transform into a guy to destruction was pretty damn cool and everything. I love to see Topo. Got a destruction for him in Dragon Ball Fighters. Last and probably least a lot of you, but definitely not the true Dragon Ball fans. Where is Radix at? We have Goku, we have base Goku, we have Bardock, but we don't have Goku's brother. We need Radix in the game. We need the only sand weaker than the Cyberman in Dragon Ball Fighters. I mean, he has a cool move set he can show off. Nah. I don't really care about seeing Radix. I'd definitely rather see Gogeta Blue, especially after seeing him in the Broly movie. Gogeta Blue would be pretty dope. He definitely did. I feel like the Broly movie was definitely a Broly and Gogeta showcase. Hey, look at, let's show as many moves and cool stuff these guys can do specifically so we can put them in video games. That's what it seemed like it was. It was just a bunch of flashy moves and whatnot. Gogeta showed so many moves, I don't even understand, I don't know what they choose from to give him in the actual game. I'd love to see Gogeta Blue in the game. And just the aesthetics that he showed, I don't know. Gogeta is definitely cooler than Vegito. 
If we can't have Gogeta Blue just add it into the game as DLC, then just delete Vegeta and give Vegeta Blue his space. Or Gogeta Blue his space. Let's just do that. Uh, that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comment section characters that you guys would want to see in Dragon Ball Fighters. Unless it's Tapion. If it's Tapion, don't share your opinion. But this is Kingdom 7 signing off. Peace.